Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on social automation. This is video number one, which is the introduction. And what I want to do now is just to give you a very quick bird's eye view of what is inside this video course. So video number one is obviously this video and we're going to talk about what you need in order to get started. Video number two, we'll talk about social media platforms. So, even though this might sound a little basic, a lot of people have created so many different social media accounts that some will be relevant and of course some will be irrelevant. Now, the only way that you're going to know is to understand which platform is for what reason and it'll make more sense in just a minute. Now, once you have a better understanding of the different social media platforms, we can move on to video number three and talk about which platform is best for your niche. So you will realize in just a second that some social media platforms don't really make sense for your customers to go to, whereas some other ones will really be relevant to your prospects and are places that your prospects naturally will want to hang out. So you're gonna to want to focus on those social media platforms. So what we're trying to do here is to help you gauge where to best spend your time. So that way you don't waste time, you spend it on what is actually going to make you profits. So video number four, will take all that information and show you how to customize your game plan. Once you've customized it, then in video number five, we'll talk about how you can map it out. So what we're going to do in that video is to visualize by mapping it out so that you can see, okay, what you need to do in order to automate the process. So in order to figure out how to do automation, you need to have a map. So imagine trying to get to a destination without a map, without a GPS, and you're just told to go here. So you're probably going to spend more time trying to find that location, right? But if you have a map and the GPS device tells you exactly where to go and the shortest route to go and the fastest route to go, then that's going to save you time, right? So that's why we're going to go through this specific step-by-step -step process. And that's why we've laid it out in this way to save you time, to save you money and to help you profit. And of course, last but not least, once you have mapped it out, we're going to talk about automation apps. There are many different apps out there that will allow you to automate your social media presence. So for example, you could say something like if you posted something like an image, a content to Facebook, then you could create automation apps that would copy that information to your Twitter, to your Instagram, and to other social media platforms as well. So that way, instead of manually having to go from Facebook, copy and paste, go to log into Instagram, copy and paste, go into WordPress, copy and paste, you set everything up once and everything else after that point will be automated. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about free tools that are out there and we'll talk about paid tools. And of course, video number seven, which is going to be the last video, we'll be talking about how to automate the whole process using one of the free apps that we discuss in video number six. So this is absolutely free. You don't have to pay any money and it's just as good of a quality compared to a lot of the paid apps out there. Now, there are different variations. There's little differences between them, which you'll see in just a minute in those videos. Uh, but for the most part, it can do the job really well. Okay, so let's talk about what you need. So we talked about that you need to figure out which social media platform your customers hang out the most. So we won't only just discuss different social media platforms, but we'll discuss how you can figure that out by analyzing your competition. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, you are simply figuring out from the standpoint of what is working for your competition already, who have most likely already paved the way. So you're based on that, you can figure out where your customers are hanging out. 
Make sense? Okay, so why? The purpose is so you don't waste time and you achieve the most conversions. And what is gonna be, we're gonna take all that information and your idea and map it out using a mind map chart. There are many different mind map softwares out there, but we recommend that you use lucidchart.com. It's one of the good options and we will use that in this video course. So you'll get to have an idea of how that works. And but last but not least, we have the how, which is this course. All right, so let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. And now we're gonna talk about the basics of the different social media platforms that are out there and the different reasons why people use them. So knowing the reasons why people use certain social media platforms is crucial because then you will understand during the day what your prospects are actually using. So we have facebook.com here and facebook.com is a place where people go to chat. Now you can use facebook.com as a means to host groups for your niche. You can have a Facebook fan page and it's really a place where people go to socialize and create relationships. So it's not only just a place where they find friends, but it's also a place where they develop relationships. So that's really what Facebook is all about. So bear that in mind that you can use a Facebook group. If you use a Facebook fan page, then you will need not only to automate the whole process, but you will need to have either someone or at least check once a day and respond to people on the platform. Whereas some other platforms, as you'll notice soon, that you won't really need to do that. So even if you're marketing something that is unrelated to maybe what their friends are interested in, it can work simply because people are there to build relationships. So if you're selling something related to, let's say, uh, B2B, as long as the demographic is located on that site, and the focus is to build relationships, then this is the way to go. Now, you might think, well, 100% of different markets should be on social media like Facebook, but that might not be the case. So different niches, some people will be on Pinterest more than others, or some people will be on Facebook more than others. So in the next video, we'll discuss how to figure all that out. So just moving through here, the next up we have YouTube. So you'll find that a lot of people tend to go on their Facebook account in the morning. YouTube on the other hand is a place where people go to either get entertained, like instead of watching TV, they'll watch YouTube. And that's something that you'll notice, especially uh, dependent on the generations. So different generations and not to generalize or anything, but different generations, some will pay more attention to TV, whereas some will pay attention to YouTube. So for example, millennials and generation Z, which is the generation that comes after the millennials, they tend to spend a majority of their time, 92 plus percent on YouTube. So they come here not really to build relationships and yeah, they can build relationships, but for the most part, they're really here to watch the video, to learn how to do something, something like uh, DIY, do it yourself niches, either to do that, to be entertained. And the relationship that they're building is really to you, who is the person talking in the video. So, their goal here is not really to build relationships with each other. And that might happen along the way. But as you can see here, it's really about listening directly to the authority. So where you might think, okay, I have a DIY niche. I'm primarily going to use YouTube to show people how, but on Facebook, I'm going to be able to build a relationship with them. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Next up, we have Instagram. Instagram is primarily used as a platform where people will follow their celebrities, the people that they really look up to, and they want to learn what is happening 
from the day to day. So what is happening during their life? So Instagram in a certain respect is a place where people can get to know you as an authority in a deeper way. So what is happening during your day? Uh, little things like, oh, I want to drink coffee or do this or do that. It's a really a relationship. It's deeper relationship. So whereas YouTube is more of a how-to platform, Instagram is more of a one-on-one -on -one relationship building. Whereas Facebook, they can get to know each other. So within your community, that's what Facebook would be used for. Instagram, on the other hand, they're really just there to follow you as, in, in their eyes, the celebrity. So what is going on in your day? Um, if you're running a business, uh, what are things that you run into during your business? Or what are promotions that you have going on right now? And so forth. So that's what Instagram is. There are many other uses, but that's uh, pretty much the general view. And then, of course, we have Reddit. Reddit, on the other hand, is a place where people find out about news. Now, it's it's also kind of a forum slash discussion board type feel. So people can get to know each other, but actually, for the most part, they find out information. So this could be a place to post the latest information, to have a discussion board, to discuss things that need to be discussed. Now, bear in mind that Reddit is, uh, for the most part, public. So it's not like a Facebook group where you can hide information. So everything is out in the open and it's public. So think sort of a discussion board slash forum style. So that's what Reddit would be. And then, of course, we have Pinterest. Pinterest is a site where you would go to post images and videos. So the demographic and the type of people that go to Pinterest are usually DIY type people, people who are looking at an item on how to items and they want to learn how to do something or they're just very visual type people. And a lot of times they're artists or uh, people that like graphics or images or very visual people in that sense. So this would be great for companies that have, more visual aspects of their business. So could be artists, it could be um, anything related to images, essentially. But if your business and your market isn't really into images, they're more into like data and text and all that, there might not be a reason to be on Pinterest. Yes, you could get some traffic, but for the most part, you would be attracting a different audience. So that's why it's crucial to figure out where your audience is actually hanging out. And then of course we have Twitter. Twitter is a place where people go to have essentially micro conversations. So Twitter has been around for many, many years uh, since the beginning of time. And Twitter allows you to follow and find out news. So it's kind of similar to Instagram in that sense where you can follow your celebrities, you can follow the brands that you enjoy following and finding out what is actually happening. So the difference between this and Instagram is Instagram is more on a personal level and a relationship building type feel. Whereas Twitter, a lot of times is really just to follow what's happening, what the news updates that like what's coming out in a business and all of that. And of course, next up we have LinkedIn, which as you know, LinkedIn is like Facebook in a sense So it's a social media platform. It's a community type platform, but it's primarily for the business or professional type community. So rather than people coming here just to be friends, people are here because they want to know what's going on in terms of work related, like your careers, people go here to find people, maybe to hire or to buy, to sell. So this is a place where you can go where your customers can be and they're looking to buy. They're looking to connect for a business, for work related type sense. Whereas if you were to do this on Facebook, then the people on, if people are in on Facebook, they're going to be kind of thrown off. So that's why you have to 
keep in mind the state of mind that people are in when they arrive to that social media platform. So those are the general social media platforms. Uh, there are many more, but for the most part, those are the top ones that you need to bear in mind and figure out which ones you need to use. So to give you some examples here, if you are an artist and you're selling, let's say paintings, you might wanna just do Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. A lot of times you'll notice a lot of them don't typically use things like Twitter, LinkedIn, and even Reddit. See, Reddit is a lot of, they tend to be more logical, but at the same time, you'll find artists on Reddit as well. So it's not really a, a black and white system, but hopefully you get the point that artists will most likely use Pinterest more, Instagram more because they're more visual and they'll also use YouTube. Whereas maybe financial, they might not use Pinterest because they're looking at a lot of data and all that. They might use Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. So that's why instead of trying to do everything, you can focus on a handful of social media platforms that you are going to be really focusing on so that you can bring the most leads, prospects, and customers. All right, so with that said, let's move on to video number three. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three. And in this specific video, we are going to figure out the platforms that are going to be best for your niche. So in other words, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and trying to guess at which social media platform is going to be where your customers are, we are simply going to spy on your competition. The best way to approach this is by going to magazines.com and looking for the top magazines or the top companies that are printing the magazines in your niche. Now, bear in mind that some niches are extremely specific to the point that you might not find a magazine. So let's go to the search bar here and type in, let's say woodworking maybe, woodworking. Let's see if they have any. So we have woodworkers journal fine woodworking. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the Woodworkers Journal. Now bear in mind, I've never looked at this before, so I don't know uh, what their social media presence looks like. So Woodworkers Journal, and let's scroll down here. Uh, sometimes if you go to the actual website, so let's do a search and see if we can find if they have a website. So it looks like this one here. So you can see off the bat that they already have YouTube. So Woodworkers Journal, they have YouTube here, they have Facebook. So sometimes you can simply go to Google and type in the name of the company and you will find everything that you need to find. So if we go here, this is their actual website. And some, a lot of times in the most of the time, you'll actually find the social media links on the website itself. So for example, here we see Facebook, Twitter, we see Pinterest. That's just an RSS feed. They have YouTube and they have Instagram. So step number one, find the company in your niche. So if you're into woodworking and that happens to be your niche, then I would take a look at this company here. So we can see that they are using Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. They're not using LinkedIn, right? Because they are in the kind of DIY niche and somewhat of an artistic creative niche, um, they're using Pinterest, which makes sense. So we can see here that uh, the types of images that they're using. So they have a lot of images here. Uh, they're using Twitter as well. And what you wanna do right now is to look and see how engaging they are and the customers and the prospects that are following them, how interactive are they as well on that platform. So Twitter a lot of times, especially for creative niches, you may not see as lot a lot of comments. So this one you can see there's there's two, there's two, there's 
two, there's five likes, there's five likes. So not a whole lot of engagement, but you know, having a platform like this would be good. So if we were to take a look at, let's say YouTube, for example, so if we go here, and we scroll down, we can see they have 165K subscribers. I'm going to just mute my computer here so we don't have to hear the audio. So if we take a look at one of these videos, and we'll just pause this video and scroll down. Remember, we're looking for engagement. So in this video, we see that this one has about six comments. And if we go back over here, and maybe go under videos. And what I would do here is I would sort by the most popular because I want to see how engaged people are. So we're going to click this here. And we can see that this one has about 8,200 likes, 530 dislikes. And it doesn't matter dislikes, we're just looking for engagement here. So we see a good amount of comments and engagement on YouTube. Whereas on Twitter, if you notice, there's not a lot of engagement at all. So that tells us in this case that we need to focus our intention on YouTube and focus our time on YouTube. But on the other hand, with Twitter, we can automate the process so that we just have any time we post something on YouTube, then we simply have it copied over to Twitter. So as I'm discovering things like this, I'm going to write that down. So, you know, upload, we'll just say YouTube, highly engaged, Twitter, just, uh, we'll just say auto post, not very engaged. So this tells us that we can post on Twitter, but we don't have to really worry about necessarily uh, engaging as much on Twitter. So just a little bit of research here and there allows you to see what is actually working, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's Twitter. We saw that Pinterest, there was a lot of uh, posts and everything like that. So they're definitely using Pinterest. Lots of images. And then in terms of Instagram, they have about 8,000 followers. So as you saw with YouTube, they had 162 subscribers, but with the Woodworkers Journal, they don't have as many followers. They have 8,000. But if we take a look at the, the likes and the comments, we can see this one has 525 likes, one comment. So this little bubble here means a comment and this uh, heart over here means a like. So if you just put your mouse over it to kind of get an idea of the engagement level. So even though people don't comment, as long as they like certain things, that tells me that there's a high engagement. So this one has 2,687. I have no idea why, but this obviously seems to be something that is resonating with people. So as you go through here, you can actually jot things down to get some ideas about what is actually working. So you can see that they posted certain things that are not getting as many likes, and that gives you a better idea of what you can actually focus on. So let's just write that down, Instagram. there's about a medium amount of engagement. So YouTube obviously is getting a lot more engagement, whereas Instagram is getting a little bit, but not a whole lot. Okay, so now we have Facebook here. So for this one, it says Facebook, we have 103,000 people that are following. Now we would automatically assume that Facebook should get a high engagement, but we don't know until we take a look. So we can see that this post here was posted about a half a month ago and it has about four comments. Now if we scroll down further, they have videos, they have posts. Let's see here, two shares, 24 likes, one comment, 17 shares, 21 likes and two comments. So what's surprising to me 
is this is showing me that Facebook actually has less engagement than Instagram. So Facebook is here, but it has less engagement. So if I were to sort this from high to low engagement, I would have YouTube first, Twitter would definitely be last. We didn't really look at Pinterest as much, but we got Instagram, Facebook, maybe Pinterest. Now, Pinterest, we assume because it's a DIY image site that it would have a higher engagement. And that's actually typical for a lot of the creative artistic niches. We have a lot of images on Pinterest and a lot of engagement, a lot of engagement on YouTube. Instagram is to be expected, but Facebook, I would have thought that there would be more engagement on there, but I was actually wrong. So this is why you can never assume anything. You have to do a little bit of research. So what I recommend that you do now is to simply do the same thing that I've done here and do some basic research and figure out what is actually working for different authorities in your niche. So that's what I would do and that's how to do it. And as you can see, it's not complex at all and you didn't have to use any paid tools as well. All right, so with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number four, and we're gonna talk about how to customize your game plan. So in the previous video, we created that list of the different items, the Pinterest, the YouTube, the Instagram, and the different levels of engagement. So now what I wanna do is just copy that over. Let's copy it over here. And I'm going to make it bigger so that you can actually see what I'm going to do. Okay, so my goal here is to take what I have researched in the previous video or whatever you did to research your competition, paste that into a Word doc or you can write it down. It doesn't matter. But the point being here is you need to customize this to your business. All right. So what we need to do now is to figure out what does this look like? All right. So if we are running a similar business, in this case, maybe a woodworking company that might do similar things like the what we showed you earlier in the previous video, we saw that they used a lot of images and they use Pinterest. They use YouTube. The YouTube channel was highly engaged. It had tons of comments, tons of likes, dislikes, and all that. And we have Instagram, which had about a medium amount of engagement, and Facebook, which had less engagement, which was very interesting, and Twitter, which was not very engaged at all. So what you need to do here is you need to figure out how you're going to go about creating your content. So what we want to do here is just expand on what we have discovered. So in terms of Pinterest, we saw that there's a lot of images. So the question is, how can we go about creating those images? Do you have images on hand? How many images do you have on hand? So I'm going to jot that down. How many images do you have? Are they professional images or are they not so professional images? Basically what you're trying to do is trying to figure out what do you have and what can you approve on? So what do you have? How can you improve? So if your images, for example, are not very professional, you need to find a way to improve that. Now, because this is DIY, it looks like to here that you're going to need a lot of images. You're going to need different angles, different angles of images. And the images need to show how, because it's a DIY niche, how to do something. So sort of a step-by-step -step process. Now, in terms of automation, how and this is going to apply to everyone. How can we go from Pinterest to other platforms? 
So if we take a look at the other platforms, so we have YouTube, we've got Instagram, we have Facebook, we have Twitter. Now, obviously with YouTube, you can't really auto post an image to YouTube because YouTube has videos, right? So, but you can auto post from Pinterest to Instagram, to Facebook, and to Twitter. Now, if you have a blog, so let's say we're gonna add a blog up here. So blog's not really a social media platform, but it is important because it may be the first place that we upload to, all right? So we could upload from the blog, which then uploads to all the other channels as well. But I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna put blog at the end kind of thing. So we have Pinterest. So how can we go from Pinterest to other platforms? So in this case, we can go from Pinterest and I'm going to put an arrow to signify we're going to copy content from Pinterest to, in this case, Instagram. So we got Pinterest. I'm going to copy that so I don't have to type it again. So we're going to go from Instagram and then Pinterest to Facebook. We can also go from Pinterest to Twitter and Pinterest to the blog. Now, for those of you, if you're not fully understanding what I'm doing here, uh, what I'm doing is figuring out, okay, once I've uploaded content to Pinterest, what I want to do is I want to use the automation apps to set things up where if I've uploaded to Pinterest, then the system will detect that that has been done and it will copy that information to Instagram. It'll copy it to Facebook, Twitter, and a blog. So in essence, all you have to do is upload to Pinterest once and the automated system will take care of the rest, right? So if we do it this way, we could go, we could also go from Instagram and up, but what we're trying to do here is trying to go from the, the extremely high engaging content, social media sites, and then go to the lower end where it's not as engaged, if that makes sense. Okay. So knowing that in mind, we also have YouTube videos. So with YouTube videos, we found that the engagement level was very, very high. So Let's see here. So with YouTube, we have highly engaged, but we're dealing with videos. So we're not dealing with images anymore. So we can't necessarily upload from Pinterest to YouTube, but we can post from YouTube to Pinterest, right? Because with Pinterest, the way it works is you're really just posting images that are linked to a blog, to YouTube or whatever link that you want. So because it's highly engaged, we are going to want to upload the content directly to YouTube. So from YouTube, where do we go next? Well, we can go, like we said, to Pinterest. So how can we go from YouTube to other platforms in talking about automation? So we've got Pinterest here, and we don't need this. I'm simply just copying it. Just makes life a lot easier. And then we've got this one, this one. Okay, so Pinterest, we can go from YouTube to Pinterest. We can go from YouTube to Facebook, and you can go from YouTube to Twitter. Now, I'm not 100% sure if you can go from YouTube to Instagram but that's something that we can figure out in just a minute. Now, bear in mind that Pinterest is a place where people go to look for images and videos. Facebook, the same thing. You can do that to your Facebook fan page and Twitter. You can simply repost it there. Now, remember with Instagram, you are trying to engage with people in the sense where people follow you because they're really there just to uh, learn about your lifestyle and and try to figure out what you're doing during the day. So we, in that case, we don't really need necessarily need to do that. So I'm just going to scrap that out because we don't really need to. It doesn't really make sense. 
And that's something that you'll discover as you're going through this exercise. Now, as you can see here, we've got Instagram media, medium amount of content. All right, so most of these will be images. In fact, all of these will be images. You have videos that you can do, but they're gonna have to be short videos. All right, so let's just put images and then type the same thing. How can we go from Instagram, in this case, to other platforms? Now, bear in mind, like I said earlier, Instagram is a place where you post, you know, what's going on during your day to day. So if you think about it from that point of view, is Pinterest really going to be the place where you go from Instagram to Pinterest in terms of auto posting? Not necessarily, right? So Pinterest and YouTube are actually very similar because they're a lot of DIY, but Instagram is where people follow like their celebrities and they follow the people that they respect the most because they want to know what they're doing in their day to day, like what's actually happening in their lives. So in that case, we see that Facebook and Instagram are actually a lot more similar compared to that of the other platforms on this list. So if that's the case, we could say maybe Instagram to Facebook or vice versa. Now with Facebook, we found that there is not as much engagement. Now, if that changes in that you were to get more engagement, you can flip the script. And of course you can engage on Facebook more and more, but based on our competitive research, this is what we found, right? So just be aware that if things change, just be flexible enough that you will want to change with the system and with the data that you're getting. So with Twitter, we're simply using that as a means to auto post. We don't have to really upload content to Twitter. Uh, Facebook in this case, I'm going to use that very, very similarly. So we're going to put down here, this is going to be the kind of the end goal of posting. So this is going to be a place where we don't have to spend a lot of time. So don't spend a ton of time here. Unless of course you get comments and engagement, then you can comment on people's uh, comments. But based on what we have written out here with our game plan, the majority of the content is going to be uploaded to Pinterest for images and videos, but the, the videos are going to be uploaded to YouTube and we'll have a, a certain amount of images uploaded to Instagram as far as the day to day. And then of course we have Facebook and Twitter, which is not so much. And then of course we have the blog, which we don't have to spend a lot of time here as well. So the last three here, basically we don't have to spend a lot of time. It's just a matter of uploading it and using the automation apps to automatically post to these three platforms. So that's essentially what the game plan is. That's all you have to do. In the next video, we are going to turn this into a visual map. That way you're going to be able to see where, what the items go where and what go, connects to what, because if you think about it, if you were to try to implement what you just wrote out here at times when you get frustrated, it's just not going to make sense and you're going to want to quit. So to avoid you getting to quit, we want to help you as much as possible to get you to that path of success. All right. So with that said, let's move on to the next video and we'll jump on into lucid chart. Hello and welcome back. This is video number five. And in this video, we're going to map out what we discussed in the earlier video where we basically brainstormed everything. So we are going to figure out, okay, how do we go from Pinterest to all of these items here? How do we go from YouTube to all of these items here? And then how do we go from Instagram to this item here and so forth? Now, I want to say for those of you who are not really visual and you prefer just text, uh, some people learn that way. Uh, a lot of people are visual. A lot of people are kinesthetic. And for those of you who are that way, kinesthetic meaning you're more hands-on and you learn that way, then this route is the best way to go. 
if you're auditory type learner and you would prefer text and the, the visual actually just confuses you, um, you can skip this step. But for the most part, for the majority of you, um, what I recommend that you do is this. So we've got Pinterest. So I'm going to go back over here. So right now I'm using Lucid Chart. That's L-U-C-I-D chart.com. Uh, this is a site that I use and it is wonderful. I really like it just because uh, being a visual slash kinesthetic learner. So for those of you who don't know, there are three different types of people who learn different things. Auditory meaning they prefer to listen. Visual means they prefer to visualize and see. And then hands-on, they prefer to see it, but actually do it. So we have YouTube. So I'm going to type that up. So at the moment, what I recommend that you do is just type up every single social platform that you're going to use. So we've got YouTube, we have Pinterest. So actually in, in our plan, we have Pinterest first, we got YouTube next as kind of the majority or the main pieces of the puzzle. So we got Pinterest, we have YouTube, we've got Instagram. And then we have Facebook. We've got Twitter. So I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually aligning things with Lucid Charts. So it's very convenient in that way, in that respect. So you can see on the left side is one inch, on the right side is one inch. It just makes things a lot nice, organized, so that when you begin to implement the process, you don't have to think which goes where. And of course, last but not least, we have the blog. So let me just double check this. So we got Pinterest, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we've got Pinterest linking to Instagram. So let's go back over here. So Pinterest is the main where we upload content. So I put the things on the top to signify that we're uploading it here. So this could be maybe the green boxes and then these down here could be a different color, maybe blue. So in my brain, green signifies the places that we upload and blue signifies uh, the places that we upload but or don't upload and we simply post to these places. Okay, so let's go back over here. We've got Pinterest. Pinterest goes to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and the blog. All right, so let's implement that. So Pinterest goes to Instagram, Facebook. So Instagram. So what you do is just put your mouse over here and you drag. You press your mouse and you drag and put drag it over here. All right, so let me move it back over here. So we got Pinterest to Instagram. We got Facebook, Twitter, and blog. So Facebook, where's Facebook? Here. Facebook, Twitter, and blog. Like that. So we could even just bring it down this or even bring it down like this all right so there we go now as you can imagine things will start to get messy once you draw a ton of lines so maybe just to simplify it what i'm going to do is make pinterest let's say one color let's do dark orange and I can turn these lines as well to a specific color so we could do dark orange to signify that's Pinterest and then with YouTube we could signify it with the logo color being red so we could do red and Instagram forget what the logo color is but it doesn't matter we're just gonna make it purple uh, Facebook being blue, or actually Facebook is dark blue. 
And I'm going to change the font color to white. Twitter's sort of a light blue and has a bird. And then blog, we're just, we're just going to make that, uh, let's say, pink, green, yellow. We'll just do kind of a medium yellow color. Okay. Now for the ones that are dark here, I'm gonna change these, the font to white. And I'm gonna bold them just so that it's easier to see. All right. So by this point, we have said every time we upload to Pinterest, it will auto post to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and blog. In fact, we can just write that if, if you want to. So auto post, auto post. And type that here, here, and then here as well. So then we know exactly what to do. So we upload here. And then we auto post here. Now, when you look at the automation apps, what they're going to ask you to do is to find a kind of what happens, like a trigger and then an action. So trigger would be initially like if I were to like kick a bucket of water, what would happen? Then the action is the water would spill over, the bucket will spill over and the water would spill out, right? So that's essentially what you want to do. So if I kick the bucket of water, then the bucket of water spills over. So in this case, if I upload to Pinterest, then it auto posts that content on Pinterest to Instagram. If I upload to Pinterest, it copies it to Facebook, Twitter, and blog. So that's essentially the analogy that I wanna give you to so that you can understand what a trigger is and an action is. So you'll see that in just a minute when I use the automation tool. Okay, so at this point, we need to go back over here and we'll speed it up a little bit. So we got YouTube, YouTube to Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. So let's do that. So we got Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. All right, so Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. So these three items here. So YouTube, we link it to here. We link it to here. And let's see how we not make it so it's not messy, we link it here. So I'm gonna make these red, the same color as this box, so we can see, like that. All right, so we got Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter, good. Now I'm gonna say auto post again, just so we know. Like that, okay, good. So we got red, red, red. So three spots. So Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. So we check over here, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Okay, good. So now we've got that done. We've got Instagram. So we've got Instagram to Facebook. And the rest of these are empty. So Facebook or Instagram to Facebook. So that's going to be here to here. So to make sure it's not too messy, I'm going to link it over here like in the back. So that's the nice thing about Lucichart is it locks in, it tries to make it as easy as possible. And, and as, all right, so we got that and auto post and there we go. So we now have a visual map as to what we need to do. All right, so we've taken all that. So the next thing we have is blog. So if you wanted to get more complex, you could have all of these, when any of these happen, you could post any of these to the blog. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna leave it as it is, all right? So let's move on to the next video and talk about the different automation tools that are available to you. Hello and welcome back. This is video number six. This is gonna be a fairly short video, but what I wanna do right now is just to show you the different apps that are available to you, which you can use to automate your whole social media presence. So 
these apps will allow you to implement what we just created in the previous mind map. So we're going to talk about some paid tools first. We're going to talk about two of them, and then we'll talk about a free tool that doesn't cost any money. Okay. So the first one is Zapier. That's Z A P I E R dot com just as you can see here with this logo so zapier.com and this site it's a little more expensive but it contains thousands of apps so the possibilities of connecting all sorts of social media platforms blog platforms and future platforms in the future it just makes it possible for you to scale all right so with zapier if you scroll down you can kind of get an idea where you can integrate different apps. So you can integrate, you know, Gmail, Dropbox, Slack, and all that. But we are mainly interested in the social media platforms. So if you click on apps right here, and let's just search for, all right, let's look at here. So we want to upload from Pinterest to Instagram. So type in Pinterest right here. And this allows us to see the different recipes that are available. So recipes are basically actions and triggers. So if you think about a recipe as when you create a dish, a food dish, like a cake, you, it requires you to have certain elements. So what this allows you to do is recipes are pre-created for you. Now you can create your own recipes if you want to. So if you scroll down here, it says triggers, we create a new board, a new pin. So new pin would be what we want to do. So whenever you create a new pin, it has actions, create a new pin. And then let's see here. So connect Pinterest to 2000 apps. So we can connect this app with, let's say Facebook. So we got Facebook pages. So now it shows us all the recipes that are available. So it says, let's see, share Facebook page posts on Pinterest. So that would be the opposite, but this one would be what we want. So share Pinterest pins on Facebook page posts. So all you would need to do is connect your Pinterest app, connect your Facebook account and use this recipe and you will already will have implemented Pinterest to Facebook. So you would have finished this line here. So if we want to go from Pinterest to Instagram, we can check to see if that's available as well. So let's just type in Instagram. And see what's available. So we can see you can pin your new Instagram post to Pinterest. So this is quite the opposite. So we need to figure out if it's possible to do it the other way around. So what you would do is you create an account and you would simply uh, have the trigger being you pin a post. Once you pin a post, then the action would be pin it to Instagram or post that content to Instagram. So hopefully you get a, a better idea of what it can do for you. And that's Zapier. The next automation tool is called automate.io. So automate.io is the website. So if you type that into the URL address at the top, you will get this page. So automate is very similar to Zapier, but I will say that they don't have as many app integrations as Zapier, but they're growing. They're getting to that point where they will be able to compete head to head. Now, in terms of customer support, I will say automate.io is phenomenal. If you email them or create a support ticket, a lot of times you will hear back within minutes. And we say that because we've actually tested them out. So if we go here, very, very similar. You've got trigger, you've got action. Now, the thing about automate is some of their more advanced pricing plans have what we call complex workflows. So instead of creating a separate recipe for you know, every single thing, you, you can simply create a map essentially like this. Now, in terms of the differences, the differences are that, like I said, Zapier has more apps, but 
their pricing plan is a little bit higher. So if you're on a budget, it may not be as ideal for you. So when you begin to kind of compare apples to apples, you'll see that, okay, so there's always a free plan, but the free plan can only do so much. So in this case, actions per month equals 250. That means that if you upload to Pinterest and then that uploads to Facebook, that is considered one action. Over here, it says you get five zaps and 100 tasks per month. So tasks are very similar to actions. Same word, just it's just the same thing. So in this case, you only get 100. So that just means, let's say you upload a piece of content and each content that you upload, let's say we look over here. So that's you know, one, two, three, four. So Pinterest alone has four tasks or actions. And then of course you have all these other lines here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight total every time we upload. So if you only upload maybe two pieces of content or even three, that might be ideal. But if you upload, you know, 10 pieces of content or like 20 pieces of content, that might not be for you. If that's the case, I will say there is a third option, which is called IFTTT. IFTTT is free, but it's just as powerful as these two. In terms of the top social media platforms, I would say that you can easily just use IFTTT for free and do it this way. The only reason why you would probably use Zapier or Automate is if you want to begin to integrate it into a lot more apps. So that's really the main difference here. So now in this case, we are going to be using IFTTT simply because it's free and there's a lot of recipes inside as you'll see. All right. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is the last video of this course and setting up your IFTT account. It's very similar to what I showed you with Zapier. It really consists of just two steps. Step number one is to connect the services that you're going to be using. And step number two, connect those services. So let's start with say Pinterest. So when you log in, you can either use your uh, Gmail account or your Google account or your Facebook account, or you can simply create a custom account. So under the search bar, you're going to type in something like Pinterest. Now, if you haven't connected it already, it's going to be under the services. So connections and services. So connections are basically the recipes and the services are the actual platforms. So in this case, we have Pinterest and what you want to do is you want to click connect and it'll simply connect to your Pinterest account. So once you click that, you're going to see this screen. It's going to ask you to log in. You log into your Pinterest account. You basically allow it and give it permissions to create boards, save pins for you, you know, access your followers and your follows, access your public info. So this basically tells it, hey, uh, you have permission to log into your my Pinterest account and post content. So we're going to click OK. And there we go. So we have connected successfully to Pinterest. And all you need to do is simply connect to the same YouTube Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and blog. So you do the same. You go to, let's say, for example, Pinterest to Instagram. So we got Pinterest to Instagram, Pinterest to Twitter, Pinterest to Facebook, and Pinterest to blog. So you can go ahead and do these. Let's say uh, we'll just connect to Pinterest to Twitter. So we'll type in Twitter up at the top here. So in other words, don't set up your recipes just yet. Just focus on the services. So we click services, we scroll down and we can see Twitter, Buffer and more. So we just want Twitter and then we'll click connect. And I went through the process, just logged in, uh, authorized all of that and connected my Twitter account. So now that we have Pinterest and Twitter connected, 
Now what I want to do is just show you the simplicity of how to connect the two. So now what we can do is if you go under your account, you click on my services, you get this page. So remember, we only had date and time, email, email digest, uh, Facebook pages. And now we have Pinterest and we have Twitter. So I'm going to click on Pinterest and now we can create recipes. So we, we can see here it's a connect to Pinterest and post to Facebook pages. Um, let's scroll down a bit. So these essentially can be triggers and actions. Okay, so up at the top, when you click on your account, you will see a option to create. So when you click account, create, you're gonna get this page. Now, the reason why it's called IFTTT is because it stands for if this, then that. So if we refer back to the analogy that I gave you with the, the bucket of water, I said, if I kick the bucket of water, which is this, if this, then the bucket of water spills over. So it's kind of like a cause and effect. So what we need to do here is if this, which is going to be Pinterest, we click this here and we look for Pinterest. So we're going to click this here and you can see that there are two triggers. One trigger is you like a pin or new pin on your board. Now, bear in mind that new pin on your board is not going to post the previous content. So if you have content from a month ago, it's not going to post that onto Twitter. It's only going to post the content from here on out. Now, there's a little trick. If you want to post content that you posted last week before you set up this automation, you can use something like you like a pin. So if you say you like a pin, and then it gets posted to Twitter, you can then go back to the previous content and simply like those pins. And that will trigger to your Twitter account. So by this point, you would have to create two different recipes essentially. But by default, for the most of you, you're just gonna do new pin on your board. So you're gonna click this here, and then you would pick a board and you would click create trigger. So any board doesn't matter or you can be specific and say that I only want anything that's posted to a very specific board to be posted to Twitter or to be posted to a specific site. Okay, so we set it up to say, if we post to any board, then this is gonna happen. So what's gonna happen? So we click the plus sign on this, that, and then we simply choose the service. So remember we go from Pinterest to Twitter. So we're going to select that here and we can post a tweet. So remember Pinterest, however, we are dealing with images. So you want to post a tweet with image. So we're going to select that here. And this is basically how it's going to appear as a tweet. So it says just pinned board. So the board is going to be the name of your board in Pinterest, the description of whatever you have pinned and the pin URL. So you could even customize this by saying, hey, I just posted to the board, which is gonna be the board. So you can say, posted to the board. So if the board is called like painting, then you can say, I just posted to the painting board. Check it out here. Now, bear in mind that you don't want to add too much because if the description or the pin URL is long, remember the tweet text is uh, very short. So you might want to just say, hey, uh, just posted, and then maybe have it here. So how it was, you know, by default, that might be the best way to do it. And of course, uh, image URL, you can add the ingredients. So basically these are things that you can add. So we have a description, we have a source URL, uh, most likely will be source URL and you'll create an action. Okay. So once that is done, we are finished.
So now your applet is good to go. So all you have to do now is click on finish and that is it. So now we have finished from Pinterest to Twitter. So from this, this line here, actually uh, this line here. So you might want to create a system and say, okay, anything that has been completed, I'm going to turn it into a specific color. And you want to make sure that color that you choose is something that you don't have at all already. So maybe a light gray color like that. So I can see it very vaguely, but not too, not too dark, maybe something like this. So we can see it, but we can see that it has been completed. So this is why we have the visual map. So we can refer back to it. So we can say, okay, we completed this. The next thing to do is create an applet for Pinterest to Facebook. Once we're done with that, we can simply turn that into gray and we can see what's left Pinterest to blog. Once we set that up, we can turn that to gray and we can see what's left. This is the reason why we have the visual map because a lot of times most people quit 75% through and all they have to do is finish that 25%. So this is gonna help you and catapult you and move you forward to the 100% and the finish line. So I hope you enjoyed this video course as much as I enjoyed teaching you and make sure that you follow the steps step by step. And as you can see, this is the end result.